Hi everyone, it's Chris Petrie. Welcome to my video. I am so happy you're here. We're going to have a great time. We're going to do uh, the whole gamut of layout, drawing, sketching, painting, design, you name it. We're going to cover it all here on this gorgeous interior of a bar restaurant. So we're going to have a real fun time um, showing you all the methods and techniques you're going to need and all of the um, tidbits of uh, little information that you might not always see on all of my videos, but I do put them in there once in a while here and there. But this time I'm really putting everything that I can to kind of give you a really good, solid way you can create a really beautiful interior like this um, with uh, drawing and painting and watercolor. And we have our subject matter right here on the video cam. So you're going to see the photograph of what we're working from the whole time. You'll see the... Um, we're using some acetate, which is basically a plastic film we put over our phone, traced it with a Sharpie marker, the basics of the, the scene with a Sharpie marker to get our main lines. Then we also used a red Sharpie as well to get our main four quadrants that we're going to make sure we do the most important information in these four quadrants of the painting here, the drawing and the painting, and then we're going to have some restful areas outside of that main portion of the painting. So we cover that with the acetate plastic film. You can use any plastic you want. That'll work fine. And then uh, this will be our end result here. And we can just zoom in a little bit. And we can kind of see an interesting bar scene. We have some really fun items here, some steak sauces and hot sauces and Tabasco sauces and ketchup on the bar here and some bottles of whiskey and wine, whatever it is here. We have lots of food here in the case. We have an ice cold case here with fresh clams and oysters and shrimp. So this is just a real, and some people here and having some lunch or dinner, all fun kind of interesting things. You can kind of create this wonderful painting. So let's get started. All right, we just saw the finished painting. So now we're going to get started and kind of just go through all the, you know, processes and procedures we use here and the methods to get the painting completed of this interior. And again, I um I just looked up uh, interior uh, bar and restaurant interiors, a uh, bar, I think I put bar and restaurant interior images or photos and I looked that on, I looked that up online and um I scrolled through maybe 50 or 100 um images and I found one that I really thought looked really great. Um, again, it has the awesome feeling of three dimensionality of all of the looking across the bar and there's some interesting, uh, you know, steak sauce and hot sauces and ketchup and cool stuff like that, salt and pepper. And then it goes across and you can see some bottles of like maybe some whiskey and vodka and maybe, maybe a beer bottle or two or something. And, and then there's a nice case there. It looks like fresh clams with ice on top. And then going into further the picture in the distance, you see paintings on the wall and light fixtures across kind of in the distance receding back into the distance of the picture. So this really beautiful photograph just kind of captures the feeling of being inside of a bar or restaurant where, you know, it's a good space, a large space, and you're seeing the um, this angle and this take on the interior. And whoever took the picture uh, did a beautiful job. It just shows the long uh, room in this bar restaurant where you're seeing the tables all the way in the back and the paintings on the wall in the far distance and then you're seeing the close-up bar and of course the, all the interesting things that we were just talking about on the bar here and light fixtures and, and beautiful colors so let's just go for it and kind of talk about it, uh, all the steps of this pr uh, process of getting the drawing done first and then we'll go in and do the painting but the drawing is the most important part here and um the only thing is I mentioned here is that, you know, if your drawing skills are, um, you know, you're still working at it, you're still getting better. Of course, it's a, a you know, years of, of working on your, you know, 10, 15 minutes a day of sketching and practicing your drawing. If you're doing it 10, 15 minutes a day, you're going to make a lot of progress. But if you kind of only draw or, you know, draw and sketch maybe once a week or once a month, you probably won't make much progress because it really is a daily thing you have to do. It's almost like reading or uh, speaking or um, riding a bicycle. You know, once you get started, you know, you just keep going and you get more, you get better at it. Like driving, let's say, if you drive a car or a vehicle, 
the first couple years you're driving, it's a little awkward, you know, you're not sure where everything is, but then after a couple years, five, six years of driving, you're used to everything. You don't even have to really think about it too much. You just kind of go with the flow. Same thing with drawing. So always remember that. Keep drawing your 10, 15 minutes a day. Sketch something, sketch, draw things, anything. Grab a paper, grab a sketch pad, a pencil, a pen, and just go for it. 10, 15 minutes every day, I'm telling you, will really reap a lot of benefits for your drawing skills. Because this is the type of painting you really do need to kind of be practicing your drawing skills. And if you're practicing 10 or 15 minutes a day for like one year, you'll, you'd be able to draw this pretty, you know, efficiently. You'd be able to get it done. Not that it's going to be simple, but if you are practicing on a daily basis, you will have a lot easier time drawing something like this. And even if you don't have all the skills and you're still working on it, make it more simple for yourself. Take my rendition of this painting and this drawing, take my interpretation of it and what I'm doing here, and just simplify it. Maybe make it a little less, uh, you know, uh, detailed with angles or more details and things like that. Just, you know, make it more simple. Whatever, you know, maybe just make it a little vignette. Maybe do a few things in this um, drawing and painting, and then you get in and do some painting. Make it like just a little bit of information here and there on the canvas. That's always a fun thing to do. Maybe you just make it like a practice session. That's what really dr drawing and painting is. You're basically just always practicing and practicing and practicing and picking up your pencils, your pens, your paints, your brushes, and you're just like basically practicing all the time. And eventually, after you're just practicing all the time, your practicing gets better and better, and that becomes your paintings, and your paintings just get better and better. So it's really kind of like a, just a discipline of doing it all the time. You'll get better and better no matter what. So don't worry about it. And I know many of you watching right now are old pros at this. I know you can do this and go right through it and you'll be able to accomplish it really easily because I know many of you, you know, many of you that follow me on my channel are really already expert level watercolor artists, but there's some new people probably jumping along here uh, in our videos here watching. So that's why I'm always trying to encourage everybody, keep practicing, don't get discouraged. And you know what? You can just even watch. If you don't feel like you want to do something like this, at least watch how I do it. And uh, know that there's lots of people here on this channel that can do this because they practice a lot all the time, drawing, painting, especially drawing skills. And, you know, you can do that too. You just have to put in the time. Keep practicing every day, 10, 15 minutes. I keep harping on that, but it's really true. 10 or 15 minutes a day will really get you a lot of progress. So now that I've kind of chimed on that quite a bit, um, let's get started. So again, I have my photograph I've chosen. You can go in and grab a different photograph from your, from the internet that you might like a little different. Maybe you'd like to do some different colors or different, but if you're going to work with this photo along with me here, we're just going to start and, and keep going here. First thing I wanted to do is I'm going to take a piece of acetate, which is plastic film. Uh, it, the, the brand I use is called Duralar, D-U-R-A. L-A-R, Duralar, and uh, they make this great plastic film. You can put black permanent marker on it and then just clean it right off with a little bit of uh, paint remover. I happen to use a Goof Off uh, paint remover. It works great, and I just take it. I'm very careful with it. I don't want to spill it anywhere or anything like that on my clothes or my carpeting or whatever I'm here in my studio I've got carpeting and I just put a little bit on this paper towel I fold up my paper towel and put a little bit on there and I just make sure I'm on the right side here and then maybe I'll get another piece of paper I'll take a piece of printer paper just so I don't get any uh, mess on my uh, watercolor paper here and then I just find the right side and that's it right there so a little bit of paint remover onto my Duralar acetate plastic and I've cleaned up all the black magic marker right off it. You can reuse this hundreds of times and it won't even affect it. All right, so I have my plastic. And you can use this acetate, you can use the larger sheets. I buy a large pad of this plastic, but you can cut it down into smaller pieces like I've done here and you can just put it right on top of your phone. So that's what I'm going to do here. I'm going to put it on top of my phone and then tape it to my phone with a piece of small scotch tape. If 
that happens, you just scroll back. There you go, it's all set. Now, what we can do is we can just use this plastic acetate and Doralar to get ourselves some uh, lines that are going to be, we're going to transfer those lines onto our paper so that we kind of get the general layout of where the lines are, where the bar is, where the walls are, where the ceiling is, where the lights are. We just want to get a basic feel for that. So I, I, I grab my magic marker, black permanent marker. I have a Sharpie. I use a Sharpie marker. And all I'm going to do is kind of just make a couple simple lines just so I kind of get the feel for it. So here, I'm going to take the marker and make a line across here and go, okay, this is the bar going across here. Like this, and then like this. And there's the bottom of the bar. And then I'm going to go over here and I'm going to maybe get this port. This is a, this is a um, case. This is a uh, case where they keep the clams cold with the ice on top for fresh raw clams. Delicious with a nice ice cold beer or a nice uh, drink or something cocktail or a glass of wine. Fresh clams in the half shell, nothing better. Those are my favorites. Lobsters too, I really enjoy any kind of seafood. I'm really a big seafood uh, lover. And uh, so here we have the, um, the cold case here with ice on top of our clams. That's good. And then we'll, we'll just, we'll make the line here where the edge of the bar is. So we'll know where to put our, we have some of our A1 steak sauce and Tabasco sauce, ketchup, hot sauce, all that good stuff, salt and pepper. Then we have these on right here. Then there's a couple other bottles and things over here, probably some really good whiskey and things and some um, wine bottles and things. So we'll, we'll get those in later. We don't have to really worry about those too much right now because we're just trying to get the basic overall idea of where things are. So here, there's the distant edge of the bar that's over here. I'm going to put that line in like this. So that's where the bar ends over here. So the bar starts over here. It actually extends over here to the right, comes over here on an angle, comes around here, and then it, uh, the edge of the bar is over here. And then you have the other side of the room. So there's probably a walkway over here. And then beyond that walkway, which is beyond the bar, then you're going to have your tables over here. So your distant tables like that. So you have some tables over here. And then the next thing I'm going to get is, um, let's get in these light fixtures. These are great. Look at these beautiful hanging la uh, lamps, chandeliers. So we're going to do those. There's about two of them there. And then there's some more over here that go off into the distance like that. And then there's um, some trim on the walls, on the ceilings. Beautiful wood trim. So we'll get those wood trim pieces in there across. And then we're going to get the piers. There's some beautiful columns here inside the interior space. So we're going to get those too. Let's just get a quick kind of feel for where those are, like that and like this. And then there's that distant molding and trim along the ceiling here. And then we have our distant picture frames. And then here we have those those columns and piers that are going off in the distance like this, getting smaller and smaller and smaller as they go, which gives us that real beautiful three-dimensional quality. So here we're just building out the basic lines we're going to need to sketch on our paper, our watercolor paper. And I'm doing this here because it's a lot easier now when I trace this to just lift this up, take it off here, and then set it down. And then I kind of can see the overall idea of what the basic lines are of everything. So mostly we have a lot of parallel lines going this way horizontally. And then we do have quite a number of um, vertical lines here where these columns are, like this. So it's a combination of vertical and horizontal lines with these nice angle, angular lines going across like that. So let's, now that you get the idea of this, when you see this on a piece of acetate isolated with just the lines, now we can take this and transpose it onto our paper. And the first thing I do is when I'm going to start getting ready to 
do my pencil lines on my paper, my watercolor paper, you'll note that I will make sure I have a pre-cut mat set on my paper, and this is uh, Arches Rough Paper. Arches Rough Paper I have. And then I put on my uh, mat here, my pre-cut mat, so I have my pre-cut mat so that I don't make it too small, the painting, and then I don't have enough to cover when I put the mat on top of it, and that's it. And then we're ready. Well, after that, we'll make a line here around the border, make sure we paint our painting large enough and our drawing large enough, and then we'll be ready to go. We'll be ready to start. So be right back, and we'll get started with the drawing. Okay, we are getting back into business here. Let's see, we have the, again, we talked about having a pre-cut mat. Really important if you're a watercolor artist. Um, you're going to want to have a, uh, maybe a three or four different sizes of pre-cut mats. You can get these online, you know, on Amazon. You can get these at the local art stores, the uh, big box, um, uh, like uh, big box um, crafts and hobby stores, anything like that. They'll usually have these. Um, pre-cut mats for watercolor paintings or any any type of uh, photography whatever it is they come in plastic jackets and you can go up and look at them there's different colors I usually always get like off-white like cream beige tan really light colors like that white they look the best with watercolors most times um, but you can uh, always experiment with your mats and get different colors but this is the pre-cut mat and this one here is a um, 11 by 14 is the frame size. So that's the out, outer edge. The outer edge of this is 11 by 14. That'd be your frame size. And then seven and a half by nine and a half, nine and a half is actually your window size, which is the uh, inside of this. So the inside is seven and a half by nine and a half. So I take this and I just rest it on the paper just to make sure I, I'll put four dots in each, one in each corner very lightly, one dot, and a dot and a little mark here, here at each corner and then okay now I know I have to at least paint and draw within that amount of space but I want to go a little beyond it so that's my goal and then what I do next is very simply I go a little bit larger than the marks I made so I go like an inch beyond maybe even a half an inch is fine. So I go a half an inch beyond, it doesn't have to be perfect. And I just do that and I just make my marks here on the paper, half inch beyond, half inch beyond maybe, like that. Like that, just so I'm going, again, larger. And then uh, I'll take a smaller ruler like this, plastic ruler here, and I'll do the same thing. I'll go about a half an inch beyond to an inch beyond my pencil marks. And once I get the feel for that, I'll just go across like this. It doesn't have to be exact. You can use a ruler if you want. I find my two marks here. And I just say, okay, let me go about an inch beyond that. And then I have my layout of my drawing. Perfect. I go up a little more like this. And I see that yeah, my line is right here at the bottom. So you can see my line is right there at the bottom, right up here at the top, and then the two sides over here and here. And that's all you need. Then what I'll do myself personally is I'm working on video here. So I'm going to take some tape and I just tape down my paper so it doesn't move around. My, my pad of paper, it's actually a gummed block, uh, arches, rough gummed block. And it's got an orange cover on it easy to find and I'll do maybe a piece of tape on the bottom as well just so the pad doesn't move around while we're drawing and painting all right so we have our try to, I, I always try to mention to everybody always try to have your paper or your pad of paper whatever it is that you're drawing or painting on either if you're either drawing or painting on always try to have it taped down or secure you never want to have your paper moving around at all you always want to have it secured no matter if you're working in your lap or if you're working on a table or an easel, whatever it is, always have your paper secure because you, when you're drawing on it or painting on it, you don't want it to s slide or move like back or forth like this or up or down. Then you can really ruin a painting by just doing a terrible brush stroke or something like that. You can usually fix problems like that, but what I'm saying is really have a nice secure paper. 
as you're working. And then we'll get our, we will actually get, we'll bring this back onto the camera, to the picture here, and I just want to show you that this is going to be our, again, this is our acetate that we had from before. Then what we're going to do is we're going to take this acetate and we're just going to say, all right, let's use a different color. Let's use red so that we can kind of tell the difference between our black uh, magic marker, our Sharpie marker drawing of just the sketch lines and this red marker. And what we're going to do is just make this, we're going to make crosshairs on this just so we can get a feel. So the halfway point in the painting is right about here. And then if we were to draw a halfway point around the middle of the painting, it's like here. So this just gives you like basically, and you could even break it down a little more. You could say, okay, let's go with another line up here and then another line down here, smaller lines. So maybe your four large blocks are here and then you have another one, two, and three, and four smaller blocks at the tops of your painting, which are more mellow. You're not seeing as much information, and you could even do the same thing. I would say we could leave it here and say, let's just call this basically four quadrants. Four quadrants to our drawing and painting. That's going to be the main work we're going to do here, but we want a little bit of space left up top and on bottom where there's a little bit of mellow space where there's not a lot going on we can kind of soften those spots out and as well as on the sides here so you can even say let's make some lines here on the sides just to keep these these sides over here a little more mellow so if you draw a grid like that that's going to be perfect because you're going to have like your main subject matter is here in these four so let's use another color again I'm getting a little bit fancy here with my uh, magic markers and things, but I want everyone to kind of see what I'm doing here and how I'm thinking as I'm preparing the drawing here. So now here I would do this. I would say, okay, the main portion of the drawing and painting is right here in this spot, the this area here. That's my green marker here. And then again, these other spots around the outside, those are a little more mellow. We're going to soften those out with the paint and you know, the washes, and you'll see how we're going to do that. But that's basically what we want to do for our design for this drawing and painting of this gorgeous interior of a bar and restaurant. And uh, let's continue. We'll lift this up. And then what I'll do is I'm going to set this across from me in my studio and I'm going to tape it to a white piece of paper right across from me so I can see it like there across across my table so that I can look at it and uh, I'm looking at it right now and I see the design and everything and all that then what I do next is I take my phone and I get that picture back up like that and then what I'm hoping I can do is I have to charge my phone here it's running out of batteries strength so what I'll do is I'll set up my phone so that maybe it can be on an angle so you can see it a little better. Well, let me get this better. There we go. Like that. All right. Hopefully you can see that pretty good. Uh, maybe you can, I can even make that better. by just doing one more thing here. I'm going to take a piece of tape. I'm going to take a piece of uh, artist tape and I'm just going to rest my phone a little more further over here so it's more in the picture frame. I realize we don't have much space to to work in sometimes to get everything in here on, on the picture frame with our videos. But this might be good. And I'm trying to just line everything up as best I can. And again, that might be better right there. That looks pretty good. I think that's good. Leah, well, it looks good on my camera here. Though I have a, I have a camera on my camera. I have a video screen on my camera, so I can kind of look and see what I have here going on on my video. And that looks pretty good. So now you can see the picture. 
We'll be working with our paints in just a little while, half an hour maybe. It'll take us probably half an hour to draw this. So let's do that. Let's start drawing it right away. And um, again, what I'll do is nothing um, too fancy. I'm just going to do the same thing. I'm going to take my ruler. I'm going to measure just quickly how much halfway is here. So I have um, eight and a half inches. So that's four and a quarter inches. So four and a quarter inches is halfway. And then I'll just take my ruler and go down the center of my paper with a, an extremely light pencil line. Probably you can see it a little bit, I think. Just barely visible though. You don't want to make that a dark line at all when you're doing your grid lines. So again, we're doing our grid lines just like this. I have it across from me, like this. So I can even leave it here. I'll leave my grid lines here. And then you see we had another halfway point. So I just, again, take the ruler. What do we have? Uh, 10 and a half inches. That means that's five and a quarter inches right there. Five and a quarter, and I'll just take my ruler and go across that five and a quarter, just roughly the rough of the four quadrants of our drawing. And then again, we said we were going to leave the edges a little bit softer over here. So let's let's even go in a little more like this, and just give yourself about an inch of space around the painting. You can do this freehand. You don't need to use a ruler for this part. See, so I'm going around and getting this outer edge of space that we want to just leave around the, the painting like that. Very lightly, though. Just put a tiny, lightly, light line in there, barely visible. And trust me, you're never going to see that light pencil line when you paint after you're done painting this painting. And you can even lift up a little bit with an eraser. I'll show you how to do that next. So the next thing we do is, since you do have a good decent, very, very visible to you back home at your studio. You're the artist now. You're following along with me and you're saying, yeah, I understand what Chris is saying here. You're just drawing a light pencil line that you can see at home, but I'm trying to draw it a little darker so you might be able to see it a little better on my, um, my video here. And I have a brand new light that I just bought for my videos. And, uh, I think it works a lot better. So you can probably see very light ske sketch lines on my paper, which is, which is great. Cause I know you, a lot of people have been mentioning that over the last couple of years that they, you want to see more of the light ske sketch lines and it's hard to see it. So I'm thinking you can see it a little better now. I, I've, I've already, I've already tested it. I know it's, you can see it better. So we have that accomplished now. The, um, sketch lines, the four quadrants in, now we can start drawing. So now the first thing we're going to do is we already know when we looked at that, four quadrants here um, when we did our tracing on our uh, acetate we said halfway was the bar line over here and the top of this case where they have the fresh clams and the ice and everything so let's I'll draw from the picture here so I'm just gonna look at this and say okay well I'm gonna start this I see there's a little bit of an angle over here so that starts there it starts about there but I'm keeping it softer over here and then I'm going to go in here and start doing my case. And then my case goes up a decent distance there. And then it kind of goes almost a little slight angle towards us. And it's not really that far this way. And then it goes right back down again here. And then the angle here, I can just take my pencil and go right onto my camera. I mean my cell phone there and say, let me just take the angle, hold it with my pencil to the angle that's right here on my camera, on my phone, my phone screen, and then take the pencil and, and just take that pencil and move the angle right across like this. And that gives you the angle. You can pretty much get it pretty close like that. And there you go. You have that angle there on the bottom of the case. And then on the bottom of the case, you have this straight like that. This is a straight line, straight of plumb vertical line. So these two lines of the case here at the bottom of the case are straight plumb lines. And then you have that same angle here. You just follow that same angle like this. So you have two parallel lines like this, one and two. And you get your first one up here, or you could use the bottom one first, but I think it's easier to do this one first. You just get it like this. You hold it up, get your angle about correct like this. Good, 
and then you just bring it on over like that. And then you do that, you put your finger there, kind of leave, you know, your finger, the tip of your finger is the, the, the angle pretty much, like that, and you have it. Then you go across here for the bottom of the case over here. And then we kind of looked at this again and we said, where is that case? That case is not quite centered. It's a little, a little off from the center, so we'll do that. If it's not perfect, don't worry about it. We just know we want to be a little to the left of that center line here, that vertical line here. Here we want to be a little bit to the, to this side over here, the, the left. And we have that. And then we just come over here and we have that. It's the bottom of the case goes a little bit out further like that. Almost close to the center line and that's, we can call that good. All right, now let's make, let's do our work down here in the bottom so we can leave this up here. And we've already been working 15 minutes, so you can see how this does take about an hour to draw. Because we're only about 15 minutes in, and we've only gotten this quadrant over here, this bottom left quadrant, completed almost. Let's try to get these lines in. Okay, this one comes over here, like that. And then when it, if I take my pencil and I line it up, the corner of this bar here is right where the corner of this is. So I go right here and I trace this line out like that and that's where the bar goes this way. And then it goes across this way here. Okay, and we're not going to be really super critical about some of these type details over here. As long as we have that angle of the bar coming this way, this way, and that way, we're pretty good. That's fine. And then we come over here and we see this is where the bar is here. And it goes across here. And then right away over here, we're starting to see all those really interesting bottles of ketchup and Tabasco sauce, mmm, steak sauce. We have a couple different kinds of steak sauce and hot sauces, and salt and pepper, whatever we have here. So let's start working on those, but let's not get critically involved with that right now. Let's just get where the rest of the bar goes here. So the bar comes down. This angle comes up here. There's a small seam in the bar where they must have, uh, where they were doing the woodwork on the bar, they put a seam in the bar like that. We just draw that for reference. We really won't paint that. And then here where that seam is, that's about where the bar starts going this way. And I think this is fine. Once we go this way, we have it. So now we have that kind of that really nice angular bar going this way and this way, this way and this way. Interesting. Or this way leading ourselves into the picture. So we kind of have that nice leading ourselves into this beautiful interior space here of the bar and the restaurant. There we go. Then we come over here and we have the edge of the bar over here. Um, maybe we can get a few other things across here. So now I'm just going to look and say, all right, the case here is about the bottom of this countertop over here, the top. So I'm just going to get that line across here like that. Then there's another bar over here, section over here halfway up here, and that's the other side of the bar, like that. So there's two lines here, about equal distance. And then there's the top of the bar up here, it looks like. Like that. Top of the bar, and this is a darker, shadowy part of the bar there. And there's the backsplash, and then the countertop over here. We'll kind of, again, minimize this. We're not going to make this a tremendously, we're not going to paint in every detail we see in this photograph. And that's another big thing you'll learn as a watercolor artist or whatever you're painting. If you paint into, if you paint oils or acrylics or if you just draw a lot, maybe you like to draw whatever it is. If you like to draw and sketch, um, you know, if you do pastels and um, charcoal and pencil drawings, 
Same kind of thing here. We don't want to go with too much detail, but if you do a lot of pencil drawing and pen drawings, well then maybe you're going to do more details, but we're doing a watercolor painting, so we don't want to go too overboard with too much detail, because then it can sometimes make too much of a clutter and um, something that's not that pleasant looking when we're looking at the finished product. So now we're pretty much doing really good. I think we need to take a break right now. I need to take a break. I think it's important again to take, to take breaks because when you're concentrating so much on all these angles and the pencil lines, you actually get fatigued, whether you believe it or not. You're getting, your brain gets tired and my brain gets tired and probably most of you, some of you can probably work, keep working. You don't need to take a break. That's fine too. I'm just saying most of us probably will need to take breaks every 20 minutes or so. So anyway, that's what I'm going to do, take a break, and then we'll finish up by doing the um, columns over here on the left and the column over here or two over this side, and then the distant paintings on the wall and the ceiling, and then we'll be completed, and then we'll start painting. So let's uh, just take a quick break, uh, let our uh, batteries recharge, so to speak, and then we'll uh, get back and cracking on the rest of this uh, drawing. All right, let's keep working here. Now, I'm also wondering, maybe some of you can't see these light pencil, this light pencil sketch I'm doing. I think through my camera, my video camera screen, I can see them uh, halfway decent. They're, they're okay. They're not like really, you know, a strong dark line, but I can see them. But I'll go over this with a darker pencil line next. So let me finish up quick here. I'll get the other features of this drawing in, but rest assured I'm using this across from me to just kind of get that overall feel of where everything is going to be as I work from this photograph, really. That's my main reference. I'm using the, this as my main reference as I draw my, my contour drawing, but I will reference this across from me too. So it's almost like I have two um, references for my, my drawing as I go. I have this one here, which is kind of a basic showing me my lines, basically my vertical and horizontal lines and the layout of kind of how it fits in the four quadrants here that we, we set up, four quadrants of drawing here, uh, sections, and then we have that softer outer buffer zone around the outside perimeter of our um, rectangle that we drew. So we first we drew our rectangle, and again it all will fit in perfectly to our pre-cut mat which we showed you just a little few minutes ago. All right, so I'm going to, again, put this across from me on white paper across from me so I can see it really clearly. And then I'm going to continue on here. So what I'll do is I will do this in a darker pencil line just in a, in a few. So now I'm going to start going across here and figuring out my vertical lines here. And I think I will use a, a ruler here. So to get these columns... I'm just going to get a quick ruler here and get them vertical, nice and vertical, straight with a ruler just to get them set. One, there's another one over here, it's kind of a, a second one there. Then the next one's a little bit closer, like that. And then the next one's a little tiny bit closer yet. And then the next one, the same thing, they, they kind of get closer and closer together as they go, like that. There we go. So these are the columns going off into the distance. And then what I'll do is I'll find out, all right, this one here is about, if I look, it's just a, you know, not a tremendous amount higher than this. So I'm going to go about here. Okay, and that's going to be the trim, like that. I'm not going to get too overly worried about the trim. I'm just knowing that it's stepping down each time it goes across here. It goes down a little bit like that, like that, and then it kind of like levels off over here. So it's kind of leveling off like that, like that, and it kind of like it, yeah, it kind of it steps down a little bit here, and then it's a little softer. But it kind of travels a little bit down on an angle. But the lines are all straight. These are the trim underneath. This is the moldings and trim underneath the plaster up here. And then up here between this one and this one, there's some space. So I do want to try to keep things looking pretty good here. And 
And then the same thing here. This one is about here. And these go up like this into the ceiling. And the same thing over here. So this one up here. All right, so what I'm going to do is maybe simplify this a little bit because I'm seeing that this is really getting intense with all these lines and things. So I'm just going to leave it like this. I'm going to leave the top portions of these columns just going straight up like that. I'm not going to put any trim on those. I'm just going to leave those kind of soft. Then I'm going to erase a little bit and I'm going to put my light fixture in here. So my light fixture is about here. It comes down into the picture like this. And it's got a top on it like that. And then another bit there. And then it goes out and comes down like this. Almost like an upside down wine glass. This is where I kind of try to use shapes that I'm familiar with. A wine glass is pretty much I draw them and sketch them a lot. I also drink wine once in a while, so I'm used to seeing a wine glass. I know what it looks like. The shape is pretty much familiar to me. And then there's another bit of light here and another light. A little smaller, so it's kind of behind. Like that. And then over here, top of the case, over here we have a table. We have a table like this. So I'm going to put a table like that. And then above that table there's another light. It's a little bit lower than this one here. So I'm going to take that light and make another light over here like this and it's a little different shape. And then there's another one here in the distance like that. And then I'll use my ruler. There's some... These go up into the ceiling like that. And this one over here, a little bit lower, like this. So I have a couple of those lights. Then here in the back, when I look over here and I say this is the top of the case, this will be the chair molding up here in the back. And then I'll take a ruler and go across here, like that. And I just realized that some molding it needs to be really, really level and good line, so I'll do that. And there's another line underneath it. I'll go up above it. Underneath it's better. There we go. Like that. And then, up here, middle of the light. So this light fixture here, right in the middle, is the other trim, which is the um, crown, uh, crown molding in the, on the ceiling. Up there, like that, and that we'll just paint in. A, you know, I'll just draw a pencil line here, crown molding there, and then there's a few more. There's a another molding across here, and then there's another molding over here, and they get a little bit on an angle like this. Like that. All right, so we have some moldings. Now I'll start doing a little bit of a darker line. This is one painting over here in the distance. Like this. That's a painting there. Then there's another painting over here. Looks like a map maybe or something. Can't tell from this far away, but then there's another one over here. Looks the same size as this one here. So we'll just do that and come over here like that. Soften that out over there. All right, so we're getting the paintings on the distant wall over here in the bar. And um, maybe we'll put a star. Something like that. Make that look interesting. Draw the eye into the distance here. And then, um, okay, that's all pretty good. All right, so we have a lot of this in good. Let's... I'll do some contour drawing here, so just to get some darker lines and so you can see. 
So I'm actually just going to get some of these vertical lines a little bit better so you can see them. You can use a ruler like that. This is a table over here, a dining table. And then um, uh, I'm not going to worry. I think I left out this column over here. I won't worry about that. Um, okay, now we have this. Let's do our some of our bottles and things like that. Let's do this over here. I'm going to have a bottle over here. This looks like a some sort of a bottle there on the counter. And then there's another one here. These are like spices. And we have, um, what else do we have here? Okay, now we have some Tabasco sauce over here. Steak sauce maybe, like that. Okay, so now you're going to see me kind of doing some detailed uh, drawing here. I'll try to make these darker. And then we have our A1 sauce. Okay, like that. Put the A1 there. A1. A little stripe on the bottom there. And then you have another, some lemon juice that looks like there. Lemon juice bottle. And next to that is Tabasco. It's got the red top on it. Here we go. And then we have over here tomato sauce. Ketchup. This is ketchup here. Okay, and then over here again we have a, some nice hot sauce, Tabasco, green sauce. These will be interesting colors when we paint these bottles of all these different interesting sauces and accoutrements. Alright, so now we have that good. Then maybe over here. These are a little higher up like that, so I'm just going to make these a bit higher. And then maybe over here we have a few other bottles here of some wine. Maybe a couple liqueur bottles here. Like that, and then another one over here, maybe a square bottle. Like that. Good. So now we have some interesting bottles over here, all our fun stuff for eating, seafood, and all kinds of good bar foods. And um, over here, there's a little bit of um, let's see, we have that. This is here. This is something else over here. So I'll just do some shapes. Once in a while you can just draw in some vague looking shapes. No, no big deal. You don't have to draw in every bit. There's another bottle over here. Looks like some ketchup or something there. And a couple more over here. So you do a few more bottles over here maybe. A couple things over here. Another couple bottles over here. that a few more okay so just a couple more things to that's a countertop there okay all right I think we have this pretty much a fun idea of a bar type scene here in, in restaurant bar and restaurant type scene seafood sitting here in the case on ice clams, oysters, fresh clams, oysters. We have some all kinds of fun, interesting bottles over here, all different colors we're going to paint. That looks going to look really good. We have a, a dining table over here, maybe. There's some things on the dining table there. A chair. We'll put a chair in there. A couple of chairs. Just, you know, for... Uh, And then uh, there's a couple people over here. Let's put some people in the chairs over here. This is a dining table. Let's kind of kick it up a notch. Let's do some figures. So I'm just going to do someone sitting in a chair here. 
and they're just having some food at the table here that looks like they're a little bit, uh, we have to make them a little larger and higher up so the head is going to be here if they're at the table and there's another person over here okay nothing too fancy when you do your figures shoulders shoulders and that's it we're not going to put arms in and all that we're just going to make it a very very Easy going painting, nothing too fancy. We're not going to be worrying about eyelashes and lipstick colors and on these figures. These figures are just going to be heads and shoulders, really. That's it. We're not going to put any, you know, other thing other than that. We're just, they're having some dinner. We're not really, it's just the whole idea of this painting that's going to look interesting. All the different colors and, and that's about it. We're not going to get into real super detail here. Okay, so it's going to be more of an abstract type painting. It's not going to be super detailed okay all right so we have our sketch done for the most part we have the feel for what we wanted to do here and again this is a practice sketch of an interior and then we're going to go on and paint other uh interiors so this is just like our first one we're going to do we'll get used to it how is it we're going to paint this interior um we'll get the colors when, once we start painting we'll get the colors that we're going to use the color scheme um, we're going to match this here, golds and, and uh, reds, warm colors, lots of warm colors here, a little bit of purple and blues in the ceiling I see, but lots of warm colors in this. This really looks nice. This is really a beautiful photograph and the colors are great. And it looks to me like a really uh, good painting. You're going to see, I think it's going to turn out really, really good. And we're not going to get too crazy with, again, details. Let's keep it simple here. Let's keep it simple on this painting. We're just getting our feet wet this time with some interior painting. And uh, let's get started with the painting next. So I'll break out the brushes and the paints next. I just have to put in a couple colors here. I'm running low on a few, and then we'll uh, get started. All right. Oh, I always forget to mention, if you like this video and you like my channel, please subscribe on the right-hand side below. There's a button, subscribe. You just click the button. doesn't really do much except for just let you know when we're making new videos. So you'll know the next time we're coming on and making videos. It's always a good thing. To keep in touch with us here on my channel so you can kind of keep practicing along with us, working with us, watching the videos. Even if you don't paint every time, it's always good to watch because you're going to hear the terms over and over. You're going to hear the colors over and over. You're going to hear all of the methods and techniques we use over and over and over. So as long as you're even just watching, you're going to be learning a lot. And that's the thing. We're, the key is learning here. We're always learning over and over in the fundamentals of watercolor and drawing and painting in watercolor. So I'm hoping you're having a great time here with me. Let's get started in just a second painting. Okay, so we're going to get started. Let's get some paint on this paper. And um, I think the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to make the, um, the uh, call to paint this a la prima, which means I'm going to start out with my darks first. So whatever I do, I'm going to start out with the darker tones tonal values, and then I'll leave the really lights for last. So the first thing I notice when I'm looking at this painting is that these uh, light fixtures here are going to be white paper, and these light fixtures here are going to be white paper, and then some of these um, uh, features on these columns inside the restaurant, bar and restaurant, are going to be white paper too as well. So I'm going to leave a, a decent amount of white paper here and there. And... Um, there's this white tablecloth here where the table is, so maybe where the figures are we'll leave some white paper there. And maybe some more white paper here and there. So, first thing I'll do is maybe I'll just do a little bit of lifting of pencil lines here and there. We don't need every bit of pencil line everywhere. I can lift off some of those original light sketch lines if I want, just to lift a few, not all of them. I think that's about good. Okay, now, the colors here, we're going to pretty much be using um, burnt sienna. That's a really um, strong accent color in a, in a dark color here. So I'm going to use that with a little bit of um, 
alizarin crimson too, a little bit of burnt umber. So I'm going to mix these darks here, and then then maybe a little bit of um, some French ultramarine blue as well for some of the shadowing within these darker reds here, which is the burnt sienna and alizarin crimson. So and a little more burnt umber up here, maybe there too. So you kind of see that we're going to start getting in our darks and also let's mix up some of our gold colors. So we're going to put in some raw umber and I have some fresh clean water over here in a sponge. Sponge, damp sponge, fresh clean water in a, in a heavy bottom glass so it doesn't tip over. And then some raw sienna, yellow ochre and raw umber. So yellow ochre here, raw sienna here, and raw umber here. That gives us some of our gold, um, golden brass colors that are on this bar. So this case is gold and brass. It's not one of the darker colors, but it is. It is kind of. So I'll just start doing this case here, and let's add a little bit of blue to it too. Um, I'll always say, please mix warm and cool. Try to get warm and cool colors everywhere. It looks much better to modulate warm and cool colors within a painting than try to just, if you're looking at a picture or a photograph and you're seeing mostly warm colors like reds and golds and uh, you know orange and reds and golds, it's easy to fall into the the trap of saying, oh, I'm just going to paint everything what I see and I'm not going to think about it. But when you think about it a little bit, you say to yourself, what's going to look better for the painting to enhance it? And that would be when we say to ourselves, we, we would probably want to add some of that cool color mixed in too as well. So that's why I'm adding in some cerulean blue to my... Uh, some orange over here, cadmium red too. So I'm going to get a lot of good interesting colors going here. And I try to keep looking back and forth at the photograph and see what I can, how I can do this to get some highlights some highlights here and there, some white paper. Over here is a lot lighter, so I'm going to leave that white paper there. bit of splashing. Okay, then we have some and if something doesn't look good. Blot it up if you, something doesn't look great. No big deal. Blot it up. And then start again. And that's some of the ice in there. Mound it up. And then some more clams and oysters in there, over here like that. Sometimes I'll dry off my brush on the uh, tissue so I can get a fine line like that.
And then we have the other side of the case over here. That looks pretty good, so our case is looking fine. We have lots of colors and light bouncing around on the metal of the brass case here for our clams and oysters in here. And we have our ice mounded up on top. And then over here, there's another there's something there. Sorry about that. These things are noisy, these glasses. And again, we're having fun here. I, I that's the main thing. We're just painting interesting things, bottles and cases and food and trim. Let's get some trim going here, why not? And as you can see, I'm kind of tying, I'm trying to tie everything together to kind of make everything look like it's, you know, sort of flowing together a little bit. So we don't have like that kind of pasted, cut and pasted look of everything looking like it's been kind of cut and pasted out and put down onto the paper. That can be a common problem that paintings have. So as long as we're kind of just working our way through the painting and tying things together like this it really gives it a good feeling of um, everything tying together and kind of weaving together versus like a cutting and pasting things down so I'm gonna try doing this method of just a la prima painting I'm painting everything at one time I'm not glazing doing any glazings and washes on there, letting it dry, coming back. To, you know, I'm doing everything at one time now. So this is all a prima painting at its best. You just keep painting as you go and you're paying close attention to the darks and lights of everything. How dark is that red I'm putting on? This red and brown trim on these piers inside this restaurant, bar restaurant. How dark is that trim? Is it matching up to this? It looks pretty close. It's, it's, it's there. And that's what we want. We want to just try to stick with what we're seeing, capture the lights and darks of everything as we go. And then we can sometimes add in little bits of darker parts to it, add a little dark shadow maybe underneath the trim up top where it It gives it some uh, interesting textures if you if you add in some darks as you go with the medium and darks. So you're going dark and medium really basically on these these uh, trim on the piers inside the restaurant. And then I'm picking up some of that French ultramarine blue and green 
here. So I'm making a dark and, and burnt umber. So burnt umber, French ultramarine blue to get ourselves a nice dark, really, really rich dark. And then you do that. You just put that dark a sp couple spots here and there like that. And already it looks better. And then we can go in here and get some more red. And we'll do our some of our trim back here. So we'll go back here. And I'll just go right across here. And this is the trim table. There's two people having dinner. There's more people over to the side. We maybe don't see everybody in the restaurant and the bar. Maybe it's just opening up. I think we're kind of opening up the place right now. So these are just a few people a little bit early for an early dinner. And we're capturing that here. And the bar, peop the people that work in the bar, the bar help is there they're prepping all the food and drinks and everything prepping all the glasses and silverware they're getting everything ready for the evening and we're capturing that here so this is going to be let's get a couple more darks in here here and there so i'm going to make that red and also some darker tones on that red to kind of give it a mystery feeling to it and not, everything's not one tone we want to mix up our tones here so but we are getting in the darks as you can see more burnt sienna I'm gonna mix up a little more burnt sienna here and then we're gonna do um, a couple of uh, trim pieces here on the wall keep working now maybe we're gonna have someone here with a brown shirt maybe I'll make some flesh tones here. So I'm going to go with um, cadmium red and a little bit of yellow ochre. And we'll just make some flesh tones there. If it comes out a little bit too red, like too much cadmium red, go back in, get some raw umber or yellow ochre, and just soften up that red a little bit. I'll get some more brown here. Maybe a blue shirt here. And I think as long as we have a little bit of uh, flesh color there, some red and some orange. I think we're fine. And again, I'm not going too fancy. If 
French Ultramarine Blue Burnt Umber for some more of that dark, just so we have some of that dark there. We're going to go in more Burnt Sienna, lots of Burnt, burnt Sienna. Um, alizarin Crimson and uh, Cadmium Red over here. So we're getting lots of that red and Burnt Sienna. Then we have Cerulean Blue over here on the bottom, just to keep uh, mixing around warms and cools. Um, and then here we're going to do a little more burnt sienna going across here. Okay, and I'm just going to do the top of the bar over here like that. So that looks pretty good. And we could go over that with a little bit more red. And then if you want to blot up a little bit there and right here, add in a little bit of blue, especially here, why not there, a little bit here, there. Touch a cerulean blue into that just to give it a little bit of a variation. And then you'll just see that we're going to keep working our colors. This is even darker yet. French ultramarine blue and brown. This is almost like a black color. I'll put some burnt umber, burnt umber in there too. And this is where we have another bit of dark. That's kind of like the, the edge of the bar that's in shadow. Like that. So we put that edge there in shadow. Then we're going to let that dry. We're going to leave that alone for right now because we need another wash underneath that dark. Over here you need immediately, we need like a brown under here, like a brownish raw umber like this with some brown under here, but we don't want to mix it in right now. This is getting really muddy looking, so let's change out our water. So I change out my water when I, when I see it's getting pretty muddy. If you're using a lot of dark washes, it, it sometimes doesn't matter too much, but if you definitely are going to do some lighter washes, um, that can be a problem. Um, what I'll do is I'll take some of that um, cadmium, ye uh, cadmium yellow and then a touch of that red in there. Maybe a little bit of lemon yellow too. So I'm just going to try to get a lemon, a nice light. And let's start adding in some some of that light in the background a little bit just to get some background colors going. And again, that's pretty simple, just some cadmium cadmium uh, yellow, a little bit of cadmium lemon yellow, and then maybe some raw umber here from this and maybe a little touch of like a lizard and crimson or red just to give it a little more of a reddish yellow. I think that matches pretty good to that. And then you leave some white paper on there, maybe not filling in every bit of color. You want a little bit of blue in there too. There's some blue I see shadowing underneath the uh, certain sections here. So let's get those blues in there with some gold. And let's get this. This is gold going through there. Like that. Looking good. Now, I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to start going up here. Where did I see that molding up there? All right, so let's, let's get back to some of our burnt sienna up here. It's kind of hard to paint up here with the phone and, and, and to my right, but I'll, I think I can work it out here. I'm just going to go Maybe I'll just go really carefully like this. I'll use the brush like this. Sometimes if you have to use your brush in an awkward fashion to do something, you just do it. I'm doing that right now. Normally I would just go across the paper like this, but since my phone is here, I really 
can't do that, but that doesn't bother me. I'll just do something different. And then it works out okay, and then I'll do the same thing. A little bit of blue into that. Maybe a little more gold. There we go. A little bit of gold into that too. Now I look at this and I see there is some purple in there. So let me get some purple mixed in with that. And I'm going to leave some of that white paper. See how good that looks? Leaving some of that paper, just you kind of drag your brush across on, a, on the side. And it gives you that feeling of light bouncing off there. And we can even lift up a couple spots there like this. I think I painted over too much there, but that's all right. But you can kind of see that sparkle. When you use Arches Rough Paper, you can drag like a... You don't put too much paint on the brush. It's kind of like a technique of just getting a um, some of that um, hit and miss look on the paper where you just you drag a um, damp brush with color on it across the rough paper. It's got that rough texture to it. And when you drag it across with just a damp brush, you get that, that effect of like the lights, the uh, little bits of light. So I think that looks pretty good. I'm going to leave that. That's the ceiling. And then uh, we'll have another bit of the gold up here. And I think we'll just do that. We'll kind of put the gold, that gold color up here. And we'll just kind of let that, let that kind of fade up into the top of the painting like so. There you go. So we kind of said we weren't going to get too extremely detailed. Now if we put some purple up here, I always mention that, if you put purple somewhere up in the top of the painting, let's get some more purple over here. Maybe some there and up here. A couple splashes, maybe some feeling of light. Um, so I will start to put purple here and there. I'll find a few things for it. We'll remember to keep that there on our palette. But as you can see, we've already had some good success with our painting. We'll maybe do one more trim up here. This is the crown molding. That's a light fixture right there, so we're not going to paint over that. We're going to go around that. And if every... Every line doesn't have to be perfect, don't worry about it. Just keep putting in some lines and things to make sure that we're moving forward here. Okay, so I can kind of see everything does look pretty good. Um, you know, we've been painting a long time actually. We've been painting 25 minutes right now, so now's a perfect time for another break. But I really feel good about what we have here so far. And again, this is a fun exercise, so I'm just going to kind of continue on with a few more things, and I'm going to call a, a day. I'm not going to try to paint every single thing in this because, again, we're let's think about just we're in here to practice and have a good time and have fun and practice the techniques and the colors and the methods that we use. This is a la prima method. We're painting everything at one time. We're getting lots of color in here. We're looking at our constantly looking at our photograph reference photo to get the colors we need and the and the darks and lights of things the tonal values the darks and lights and and that's really what we're doing here so we're this doesn't have to be a masterpiece painting or anything like that sometimes when we under finish a painting too it looks kind of interesting and it looks good so let's keep that in mind too that we're going to under finish this one we're not going to do every single bit of color and every line that we see we're just going to keep working it all the way through and until we have a little bit of good color and subject matter painted throughout the whole area of this rectangle. And um, I think if we do that, we're going to be happy with the result. 
and then we're going to be moving on to another painting and another painting and another, you know, we're just going to keep moving forward, doing more and more and more. So let's do that. So at this point, let's take a break and then we'll come back and we'll start to work down in the lower quadrants of the painting, these two quadrants, the right and left, lower right and left quadrants of this painting. We've already put a lot of work up here um, in the top two quadrants, left and right on the top. Let's do the bottom areas now a little bit. And then we'll go back in and do a little more work up here, perhaps. And then we'll, we'll, we'll have a, a really fun painting done. And it'll look kind of really interesting that we're not just painting everything and, and uh, you know, leaving some things to imagination, okay? All right, so let's come back in just a few minutes. All right, we're moving right along here. And uh, <clears throat> we're just had the idea of let's get some paint and washes on throughout the whole painting, but not finishing every, you know, everything up 100%. So we did a little bit of work here. We started with the case, the seafood case here. And then we moved into some trim here on the columns inside the restaurant, the bar restaurant here. Then we moved over and went into the figures sitting at the table here. And then we had the top of the bar here and there's some dark shadows underneath the the bar section here and we have to do some more work under here too and then we did this back wall here with the paintings and we have to get some more gold paint on there and um, the light incidentally is coming from the front of the restaurant coming into the restaurant this way so I do see that light pattern of the light coming this way and we always like to say let's try to put our light insignia up on our painting so somewhere up here maybe over here to the side we just put the light insignia like this like that. Especially when we start painting. When you're drawing this, the pencil drawing, that's not such a key thing, but once we start painting, we definitely want to kind of get the feel of where is the light coming from in the painting. Does that make sense? So if we do remember that, that will be a, really a, a key to helping us see where the light is and where we can put some shadows on things and kind of make sure we're kind of getting the kind of an accurate um, depiction of the light in the in the painting that helps a lot to make it look realistic so I got some I have some fresh clean water here and uh, let's continue on um, I think I'm gonna work down here now so I will get some dark paints here I can see there's some dark bit of wash there right underneath here so I'm going to get that bit of dark there, like that. And then there's a bit of medium tone here. a little bit of dark in that too so I pick up a little bit of that French ultramarine and burnt umber maybe a little bit of burnt sand in there too like that now let's see let's do some red over here there's some red a little bit of cadmium red I see so I'll put some cadmium red, and we're just having again some good fun here, enjoying the uh, the colors and the, and the shapes of things. And we now we know we're going to be seeing kind of cylinder shapes. These are bottles of ketchup and um, salt and pepper shakers, and bottles of ketchup and uh, A1 steak sauce, and all kinds of cool stuff like that. Tabasco sauce, hot sauce. So. Let's have fun doing these. And again, the light is coming from this way. So you could even, sometimes you can come in and take a tissue or a paper towel and just blot up a little bit of light on your subject matter like that. To 
to, to kind of blot out a light if you want to. Sometimes, you, you know, as we, as we all paint, sometimes we get tired or fatigued and we lose track and we think we forget to where the lights light is. And so you can always lift up a light with a tissue if you have to, to kind of keep your um, lights preserved. So here I'm going to rinse off my brush and then I take tissue and I dry off my brush with a tissue and then I just take the, the damp brush and just do the lighter bit of um, wash over here and then go back in and get a little bit of darker darks there and kind of do that. Put the dark on that side so you kind of have that feeling of light there. And then a little bit of red is in there too. There's some kind of orange and red. And then what next? Now we have some burnt umber. Burnt umber and burnt sienna looking steak sauce of some sort. So I'm just gonna I'm getting in the uh, the look of the bottle. And I notice the bottles are sitting on the counter here. Like that. And I'm not, I'm not really, you can, maybe you can see I'm not trying to get every detail in there. I'm just really trying to get the basics of it. Having fun with it. And some more. That's there. Maybe I'll use a little bit of blue. Do some A1 steak sauce here. Some blue. Go. Cool. And then some red. That is some. And I'm just kind of working my way down here. The um,
and painting in these uh, painting in these bottles are fun here on the top of the bar There we go. Okay, so we have plenty of Then we could take a little bit of reflections here, like this. Like that. A little bit of splashing. This is where you know, we have some fun with the, uh, the medium here of watercolor. You can splash. You can kind of have a good time with the um, reflections and things like that. And then we're going to go back over here and try to get some yellows and some of that burnt sienna and just going to try to get some of these uh So dark there. So I'm just trying to get the some of these shadows. They're very subtle, but the reflections and the shadows of this case actually they come down this way here. But I'm not going to get too detailed again. I want to try to. keep from going overboard on the details and there's some gold here too then I'll get some burnt umber burnt sienna I think what I'm going to do is try to Get this interesting so I'm going to get this interesting line here like that and then I notice that uh, there's some lines across here it's light on top here And then there's some burnt umber and uh, burnt umber and French ultramarine blue under here like this. Like that. All 
All right, so that gives us a good dark bit of line there. And then over here, uh, we could gray it down a little bit maybe, like that. And under here, there's that dark again. So these are the shadows under the bar. I think that looks good. Kind of a good angle here just to kind of come through to lead us into the picture. Doesn't have to be perfect. Then we can come over here and this is the This might be a part of the, this is part of the trim over here. Like that. So what I'm going to do now is sort of look for things to look for things to kind of add some more interest in on the bar top area. So this is kind of interesting here. So I'm leaving a little bit of light over here. So we can see, just trying to get everything sort of uh, rounded out here. This is a little darker.
and then more gold over here. Okay, so we are really moving along here, and I think I'm going to leave some of this paper white. Uh, I might splash in there a little bit over here, but we're, we're going to kind of wind things down here. Um, splashes over here so I want to kind of leave the white paper and then up here I'm going to do these like that Okay, I'm going to leave that to fade a little bit there. And the same thing over here. And as you can see, I'm just going to do the rest of these columns here. Like this. Using up the gold. I'm not going to worry about it. I'm going to go around these lights. I'm going to leave these lights bright white paper. of shadow over here. Maybe a little bit of just a little bit of the gold on the white paper over here just for a little bit of color like that but nothing much we want to leave that kind of bright white and then we noticed over here, we wanted to kind of get this over here. Kind of like that really nice golden color. So I'm just picking up the rest of that gold color. Over here, I go right around the figures. And I make sure I don't flood the figures with any uh, a lot of water or anything like that. And then I'm going to take a little bit of shadow colors over here under the table, the tablecloth there, and then some shadowing over here on the table. And 
in then maybe a couple just a couple lines maybe very faint lines for these fixtures I would use a thick paint uh, no water in the paint just straight paint right out of the tube right out of the palette since the paper's a little bit damp And I think we've had a lot of fun. Let's call this complete. Um, we got lots of colors in here. Fun times putting all our pencil sketches in, laying out the painting with our four quadrants. Um, we used our acetate. We used our acetate to help us lay out the painting correctly. We used our photographs here. We found some photographs online. You can find any of your own photographs you like, or you can look up something like this similar to this. Um, you can work right from my painting, especially in the beginning of the video, I show the close-up of the painting, so you can work from that. You could take screen captures or screenshots from my work. Uh, so you can pause the video on my paintings or my drawings. So there's many different ways you can kind of work along using my um, paintings or my drawings as well as uh, creating some of your own ideas as well. And I hope you will. I hope you'll take this idea and maybe create a few more indoor um, atmosphere type paintings where you're doing like interiors of homes and bars, restaurants, maybe museums, um, all kinds of interesting things you can think of. Um, so we're going to call this one finished for now. Um, we leave, you know, lots of white paper in here too as well, just for some areas of restfulness for the eye. And, um, and then some good strong darks throughout the painting to kind of give us that real uh, solid feeling of everything is, you know, kind of strong in the painting, looking good. The angles, the colors, the depth of uh, richness of colors. So we had a lot of good things here we accomplished. And um, feel free to keep working on uh, interiors like this. Uh, and we'll see you on the next video. Bye-bye.